Okay, hi everybody. Um, welcome to the session on serving displaced learners. Um, we're joining you from Cape Town and from Rwanda. Um, so I'm Christina Russell and I'm the Executive Director of Southern New Hampshire University's Global Education Movement and Noria. Hi, um, so I'm Noria Dumbrin de Savideme and I'm a graduate SNHU graduate with a bachelor degree in communications with a concentration in business. Thanks, Noria. So um, we are going to walk you through over the next 45 minutes and would welcome any questions, comments, any of your thoughts along the way. Um, I will be actually be talking a little bit about our model and then um, asking Noria several questions. Basically, we're just going to give the group an overview um, about the global education movement, how the model really works, and it's a heavily partnership-based model. And so Noria is going to really take us through how the partnership works in terms of getting outcomes for um, our refugee and uh, learners who would otherwise not have access to higher education. And she's also gonna talk to us a lot about um, her own personal life transformation, as well as that of her community and the future. Um, so we'd really welcome you to send any questions um, our way to um, help give more of an overview of how this model actually works. Um, so at a, a base, um, what we do is we work with on the ground partners and Noria is going to give a really specific case study a bit later to offer bachelor's degrees and pathways to quality employment at no cost to refugees. And um, not all of our students are refugee learners in the GEM program, but the majority are. Um, and so the, the way that this works, again, is working in collaboration with SNHU's online degrees and also our partners um, that are located in each location um, where we are. So um, you may or may not be aware that the, the headquarters of Southern New Hampshire University is in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, but actually all of our students are served in either the refugee camps or urban areas where they live. And the reason for that is that um, both because of cumbersome paperwork processes as well as travel costs to come to the United States, um, the way that we try to serve as many students as possible is to go directly to where our students are living and bring the learning model there. So we are operating in Lebanon with three different partners, um, multi-aid service programs, Lebanese Association for Scientific Research, and UNRWA, um, and that's located in Tripoli, the Bekaa Valley, and Saida. Um, we have many meetings in Beirut, but actually don't run a site in Beirut. And also I'm really happy to report, um, given the recent explosion, that our students and partners are all safe and continuing their learning despite drastic challenges there. We're also operating in Kenya in Kakuma Refugee Camp with Jesuit Worldwide Learning. And our newest partner, um, not even on the map in our slide yet, is uh, with Jesuit Refugee Services. We're also serving students in Nairobi. Um, Rwanda is a really special partnership because it's our first partnership. We began this work in 2013 with Kepler in Kigali and then in 2015 in Kiziba Refugee Camp. And Noria is going to walk you through a little bit later um, her journey and the specifics of how the program works there. Uh, we also are working in Malawi in Zaleka Refugee Camp. That's the same partner, Jesuit Worldwide Learning, as um, we work with in Kakuma Camp in Kenya. And then last, where I'm coming to you um, this evening on my time zone at least, is from South Africa in Cape Town with our partner, the Scalabrini Center of Cape Town. So um, 
Our model is, is really based on three core components. The first is working with our local expert partners. And so that last map that I walked you through um, lists out each of the partners. Essentially, you could think of this as our online degree um, being the online component, but still a pretty heavy in-person and face-to-face -face component in terms of serving our learners. And that's where the local partner comes in. Um, so in each place, there's a physical learning center and our partners provide um, the contextual supports needed in each location to really ensure that our students are successful. The other piece that's really important with the model is an internship and employment component. And both the SNHU teams and our partner teams um, work really hard to ensure that students are Securing internships um, these days during COVID, most of those are digital, but there are still occasionally some face-to-face -face internships. And then working really hard to build the social capital needed to create employment opportunities for our students. And um, since we began this work in 2013, we heard really loud and clear from our students that learning is important to them and higher education is important to them but the reason it's so important is because um, they need to economically transform their lives and so from that um, inception or or learning from from the importance of that for our students we've measured our success not only on degree completion but also on employment placement as well as the change in income for for our students so our metrics um, with our funders and also our internal SNHU um, K KPIs or key performance indicators rest on both the degree completion and employment. And then the last piece is um, our competency-based degree. So really proud that SNHU was um, one of the first to have a competency-based degree accredited in the United States in 2013. And that was the same year that this work began um, with Kepler in Rwanda as well as, as sort of a pilot that we've been able to expand over time. Um, the rest of the partners outside of Rwanda were all opened in 2018. So um, those sites are a bit newer. Since 2013, we've been working on the competency-based degree, and essentially the degree is a platform where students log on and access projects, and those projects themselves lead to the completion of the degree. So when a student gets a project, there at that time is no professor with the project. The student gets the project, will get a, a series of free online resources to be able to complete the project, and the student can use those resources or use their own resources. And then the, the project is turned in for assessment. Um, when the project is assessed, the assessor or faculty role at that point, that's the first interaction that they're really having with the student. And the faculty member will determine if the student has mastered the project according to rubric criteria, or if the student has received a not yet. And if the student has a not yet, uh, they will receive feedback on what they need to improve. And a student can submit an infinite number of times before mastery. Um, and so part of that assessment process is also how we are working to try to serve more learners and create a financially sustainable model. Um, so we opened an assessment center in Rwanda and we work with local talent in Rwanda and combine that with artificial intelligence to reduce our degree costs. Any reduction in the cost goes directly towards serving um, additional refugee learners. So the GEM project is both the direct service of students, but also trying to push on the bounds of um, how we might assess and, and look at learning to really reduce some of the costs. Um, I know that's been a, a big topic throughout the conference, the burdensome costs and also access. So the global education movement is um, our effort to do our best to address and start to test some methods that we might be able to solve some of those problems. And before I turn it over to Noria, I just wanted to um, really take a pause for a moment and, and discuss kind of how the program is working um, in the context of our global pandemic. 
Um, so currently, um, roughly only 3% of refugees have access to higher education. We expect that that number could unfortunately decrease a bit um, because of COVID and many programs having to be put on hold um, in camps or urban areas where refugees are living. We're really proud that through the hard work of our partners, um, they've been able to take their normally in-person academic support services, internship support services um, to a digital format. Um, and we've worked closely with our partners to both support from them and learn from them and how to make that happen. Um, and because of the time flexible and um, online nature of the degree, we have not at any point had to close any of our programs in any of the camps or urban areas where we're operating. Certainly the program looks different, but we're seeing um, the same levels of student success in progress and in some cases even some acceleration of success as people are finding um, more time on their hands. Um, so we're, we're pretty concerned um, with global refugee education, both in higher education and K through 12 and the impacts that um, COVID may have on that. So currently already um, camps, urban environments are quite complex and challenging for refugees to navigate. Um, this includes securing food, of course, um, rent payments for those living in urban areas and often discrimination or really hard um, hard policies around the right to work. So we expect that as COVID continues to challenge us and open up opportunities, it will also probably continue to present barriers to access for refugees to both higher and general education. Um, and then of course, in funding trends. So um, higher education to us is an essential component for community leadership. But of course, when folks are also struggling with medical and food needs, it may not always be readily apparent to supporters um, the ways that having those trained in higher education within communities can better solve those problems. So we're really working hard on some of that messaging with um, our supporters and getting um, folks to continue to support um, the students during this challenging time. So with that, I want to um, turn it over to Noria and she's going to really walk you through her own experience of what it looked like um, studying in Rwanda and how the SNHU and partnership model works. And we wanted to really highlight this um, at the conference because we realized that people, people often just imagine that students were jumping online and secondly, um, wanted to make sure that the group really is able to understand um, how how and why we think this model has been so successful so far. So Noria, take it away. Thank you. Um, so I will start with um, explaining what is the role of an SNHU GEM partner. So an SNHU GEM partner is an organization that is located in refugee camps or in urban areas that often serves um, as a bridge between students and SNHU. And they provide support such as local facilities. Uh, in my case, um, I spent the three years at Kepler Kigali campus. That's where I was able to get the academic support, uh, in-person coaching, and also guidance on how to get the best out of my degree. And um, upon uh, our uh, arrival, we were provided with laptops and internet. And we also had access to electricity where we would uh, work in our free time in uh, during classes where we would get support, but also anytime that we feel like we wanted to work. And another thing that the partner provides is the connection with in internships and local employers. So in Kepler Kigali, we have a career department and the career department often links students to local employers and um, through events such as career fair or networking events that happen outside the campus. And not only do we get exposed to the outside world, but we also have uh, those opportunities in the campus where we, where we have work studies uh, opportunities such as teaching assistant, librarian, or working at the reception. 
those are a few examples of the work studies that are available. And another thing is the mental health and medical support that is provided. So in uh, our campus, we had access to a counselor. And in my case, as a student who moved from Burundi to Rwanda, it was really important to have someone that I could go and talk to outside of the academic uh, setting that would help me to get used to this new environment I was in. And it has really helped me and shaped how I got used to the environment and how I interacted with other new students. And it also provides uh, this space where you meet with new people. So I was coming from Burundi. I met with people coming from Congo. I met with people coming from Uganda. I met with people coming from different places. And we didn't uh, have the same understanding or we weren't used to uh, living together as a community. So for me, that was the first time I actually left home and went away for that long time. So I really um, felt like I left home for another home with all the support that I was having. It wasn't easy first, but as time went by, I, I got used to living with people from different uh, backgrounds, living with people who understand things differently from how I did. And it really helped me to have a broad view of how the world is and how to actually work together with people who are different from how I was. So that was uh, how the Snow Gem partner Kepler uh, helped me and um, supported me during my three years at the campus. Great, thanks, Noria. So before we move on, I just wanna ask a few questions, um, especially in relationship to the local facilities and sort of what's happening there. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what does it look like? What was a normal day in the life for you? You know, who's at the local facility? Um, what are you doing there? Are you doing classes? Are you just doing online learning? Are you doing social activities? You know, what would people see um, at this space and, and what was your daily life like? Um, I have first to talk about how this is unique because it's a blended learning. So we have online classes, but we also have in-person classes. We had in-person classes. Uh, when I first came to Kepler in 2017, I got uh we had a summer bridge program so it's this program where students get first used to the word we're going to be in so we had support um on how to write a report what should be included in a report how to use your laptop how to take care of your laptop and how do you create a budget how do you manage your time those were notions that i first got a uh, hold when i got in Kepler, and um it, it took me time to understand that, but it, it was easy because we had facilitators. So we, we would come in class, we would spend two hours with a facilitator who would guide us through uh, the lesson of the day. And then if we still had question at the end of the session, then we would have this uh, office hours where you can just reach out to the facilitator and ask questions and also, um, ask maybe for more support in terms of not understanding well what uh, we were working on. And that has helped me and other students to, at the end of that summer bridge, to be able to be ready to tackle um, the projects on our platform. So we had the support. We, we also had room to work on our own before actually uh, requesting for the support and it has helped us to shape our independence but also know when we should ask for help. Great, thanks Noria. Um, and just to clarify, um, who who is the staff there? Just a quick follow, who is this SNHU staff? Is it partner staff? Um, what's the general profile of who you're working with in the local facility? Um, so we had partner staff, we had uh, local people who would help us uh, through the lessons of the day and even in the career department, uh, those are people who um, 
are local and who have connections with other local employers. So basically we would interact with uh, the partner staff most of the time. Actually, the majority of the time, unless maybe there is an event or something that included uh, SNHU, so most of the time we're with the partner staff. Great, thanks for offering that clarification. And um, we had our first question from one of the participants listening in right now, which is which degrees are most in demand? So maybe I'll um, start in by answering the first part of that question, which is the degrees that we offer. And I think this is a great question because it's often an area of feedback that we get from students on a place where we could improve. Um, because there are actually only three options within the competency-based degree. So maybe for um, some of the more in-demand or future improvement areas, I'll turn that part over to you, Noria. So um, uh, the degrees that SNHU offers in a competency-based format in this particular program are in communications, which is um, what Noria earned her degree in. She just graduated. Um, also uh, business. And the third is healthcare management. Um, but I, I really love this question because it does tap into the student demand. And I think many of our students have requested for a lot of different areas of study, more choice. So it's a, it's a good area for us to think about improvement. Noria, could you share um, what are some of the areas that your classmates were wanting to study or would study or what might you hear that, um, that people wanted to study that's not yet available? Um, so, as we first started, we were uh, we knew that we were going to actually work within a field that included business, but um, technology is a field that is very in demand, and um, most of the students that I talked to would uh, actually want to work or study um, something related to technology specifically, and it actually is included when we work on different projects, but not tailored to having a technology um, degree. And another one would be about um, community. Uh, because when we first start, uh, we have this community uh, that we are in, and most of the things that we work on comes back to how we how we live in our community, how do we help our community. And all the, uh, the degrees that we have tackle how we can help the community, it would be a great thing to actually have a degree in that. Great, thanks, Maria. I think I often heard a lot of requests for engineering as well. Did you hear that from your classmates ever? Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess that's, that's related to the te technology part and um, because it, it's actually a field where students feel like it's very uh, in demand and would help them kind of have more jobs available as we have Rwanda and even other countries that are uh, shaping and getting their way into the use of technology more. And I, I agree with you on that point. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so um, Noria is also going to share with us sort of how the partnership between SNHU and partners um, has really transformed her own life and how she's thinking about her future. But before we get to that, we just wanted to share briefly with the group some of the outcomes. So um, this research comes from um, ID Insight, which is a company um, operating around the world, helping um, those trying to solve social problems, um, understand where their programs are doing well, where they might need to improve. And so ID Insight began working with us in 2013. And so we've got some longitudinal uh, research out on sort of this, especially first and second groups that went through the program. And it's some pretty uh, exciting outcomes. Um, the first is that 90 5% of the students graduate with a BA within four years. Um, and we think that a big component of that is because the demand is so high. Um, I uh, spent three years working for Kepler before joining SNHU and, and lived and worked in Rwanda. So got to witness firsthand how eager people were during the application process. 
Um, we would have anywhere between 150 to maybe 300 seats in any given year and anywhere between three to 7,000 applications. Um, so it's become quite competitive and we kind of have the brightest minds um, in, in the country in many cases in the program. Um, although um, students coming from, you know, pretty, in, rough backgrounds and economically. Um, so living on in somewhere between maybe 50 cents to $1.50 a day, um, but really, really wanting to have this opportunity. Um, so we think that's what's resulting in the high graduation rates is that real high level of motivation and competitiveness in the program. 88% um, are employed within six months of graduation, and the SNHU GEM graduates are making 103% more income than their college educated peers. So this is really exciting outcomes for us, obviously, in Rwanda. Um, we do know that maintaining these outcomes are going to be pretty challenging um, for a few reasons, but mostly because um, Rwanda and South Africa do have rights to work for refugees. Um, Kenya, Malawi, and Lebanon have very restricted to no rights to work for refugees. And so we know that we're up against a big challenge in maintaining these numbers. Um, likely will be difficult, but we felt like we wanted to really take on the refugee livelihoods issues as they exist, um, which generally means that um, many people are facing employment restrictions um, by the government where they are being hosted. And so Noria is going to talk to you a little bit actually about um, her post, her, her employment that she's working on right now, um, which is a big part of our strategy, which is to really double down on digital jobs. Um, so this is one of the opportunities that COVID has helped us with in some ways because most work is going digital right now. It's a little bit less of a foreign idea than it was when we really started pushing on uh, refugees and digital work. So these are the outcomes from the partnership program um, that, that Noria went over. And next we wanna get back to her life a little bit. So this is sort of the broader and we'll go back to um, her story both as she was studying um, and also sort of looking at her future. Yeah, thank you, Christina. Um, so I joined Kepler in 2017 and before joining Kepler Kigali in Rwanda, I was in Burundi and that was actually the first time where I had to leave home and go in another country. Uh, the great thing about it was that it's a nearby country and every time we would get holidays, I would be able to go back and see my family. But at first it was challenging and I had to get used to not being home, not just coming back every day and uh, learning that I was in a new um, journey where uh, I would be shaping what would be my future. And so I first started um, a little story is um, we, I started in high school in French and first it was not easy for me to actually get hold of everything because the whole system in uh, Kepler Kigali is in English. So with the support provided um, by the coaches, with the support provided by the team and also being with other students has helped me to come out and um, just try new things and learn English very well because that's the only way to actually strive in Kepler. And also as I went by, I was able to actually um, learn how to live in my community to the extent where I applied to be uh, a student uh, association uh, president. And not only that, but I also, um, got different uh, work study opportunities, one being uh, a teaching assistant in technology. So I always had a thing for technology and being uh, a teaching assistant has helped me to develop how I could help others, but also how I could improve uh, how I was learning. Those were not the only opportunities I got. I also uh, got the opportunity to work with Bertrick, which is, um, an organization based in the US that is about women empowerment and health, where we would actually walk uh, each day for 30 minutes. Uh, 
I had uh, girls join me and we had an amazing team before COVID happened. And it really helped me to get a sense on of how I could work with girls, how I could work with different women and how I could import them in uh, different settings. Um, another thing that happened was how I, I, before I didn't think that I would be able to get where I am today. And the proof is the degree that I earned. And the fact that this has been done in three years uh, has proven me that I can even be able to achieve bigger things if I set my mind to, and if I work hard uh, to get that. Um, the other thing that uh, Kepler has exposed me to was uh, networking events where I got the opportunity to meet the president of SNHU and other people uh, who later became uh, employers. And um, that's how I met with uh, Shipra Kayan. She's uh, the CEO and founder of Siriforce, which is uh, a great organization that is working on how to uh, support uh, refugees and expose their talents. Uh, it's still starting up, but uh, in the vision it has for the next years, it's going to be a great, uh, a great organization. Um, this is not only about what happened in the past, but also how I see my future. And uh, as I move forward, I see myself earning a master's degree. I see myself uh, getting uh, more into how I can help my community. Uh, I have six brothers and they all look up uh, to what I accomplished. And I feel like they can even do more than what I did because I did it. And they also uh, have my support, not only them, but also other girls and women. I recently started working with uh, other Burundian girls who are trying to provide um, different uh, reusable parts to girls in rural areas. And this uh, is a great thing that I wouldn't have done before. And it's not only about what I can do, but also how I can learn from others. The example will be this summit and how I can connect with different people. So it's not only about my experience, but I feel like the the work that Kepler has done and NSU is uh, is doing can be done also by other universities if they uh, join SNHU, if they come up with uh, this amazing uh, way to support refugees and also other learners who are in these place, uh, uh, places. And please uh, reach out to me, reach out to Christina if you feel like you can uh, provide some kind of help, some kind of support. Uh, we will be really, really glad to provide you with more information and how you can support. Thank you so much. Great, thanks, Noria. Um, we do have about 10 minutes left for questions, so would welcome um, any questions in from those who are listening and we'll be sure to answer them. Um, but in the meantime, Noria, I of course have some more questions for you. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to think about um, this partnership model um, and and kind of thinking about a very Western US based um, institution partnering with organizations in Africa and in the Middle East. And in your perspective, um, where where is SNHU and the partners really getting it right in terms of the partnership? What's sort of some of the most powerful things that are happening in the partnership? And then where from the student and graduate perspective do you think that things could or should um, need to improve to make the partnership a better learning experience for students? Uh, I will start with the first one. What is being done right is providing this opportunity, this dream to people who wouldn't have access to it otherwise. Uh, before, uh, learning about Kepler, I would have never thought that I would be able to get a US degree uh, being in Rwanda. So that only is something really great. And also being able to afford the degree, uh, 
being one of seven uh, children is not something that has pushed me to think that I could just dream of flying to the US and getting that degree. But with Kepler and SNHU, I was able to actually study and have the support to earn the degree. And not only me, but I feel like if my brothers or any other person uh, puts their minds into doing this, they can actually make it. And that's a dream that was not possible before learning about Kepler. And maybe the improvement will be on how to adapt the project on a more local context. Because when we're working on projects, uh, there are some who have a US context. And it's good because we have the internet, we can do research about it, but the application requires it to put it in the local context. So that will be maybe something to work on and it can take time because uh, refugees are in different places. They're not living in the same conditions. They're not exposed to the same things. But if it's uh, what has been done is, is really amazing. And I feel like that can also be done and it might take time, but it can be done. Yeah, I think it's really good advice um, and also sort of a, a great point that it's almost like double learning if you have to learn the U.S. context, compare it with your own yeah. context to just get to um, the starting point of working on the project. So I think that is a, a great area um, for SNHU to think about improvements. Um, so you did mention that um, yeah, projects could be included or, or I'm sorry, improved to have a better and more culturally relevant um, learning experience. Can you maybe talk about, um, just so that listeners can get an idea around how the projects work and also um, how you're able to apply them because they're meant to be quite practical and preparatory for workplaces. So does a specific project come to mind that perhaps really influenced you with your work right now with SiriForce as you are working in a startup with somebody in California across multiple time zones, trying to solve this worldwide problem around digital employment. Um, does anything come to mind and can you tell us what that project is and how you apply it to your current uh, position? Uh, the project that comes to my mind will be um, one where we had to work as a team and come up with uh, different rules for the team, set up rules, set up goals and um, Set what will be uh, the measure of our success. Um, it was easy for me because I was working with my peers and we were um, in the same place. But then we had different uh, we had different uh, schedules, so we would have to schedule and reschedule to be able to to come up with that time that works for everyone. And at first it was hard, but then um, with the learning that uh, we were going uh, with, it was easy for us. And now that I have to work with someone in a different time zone, now that I have to schedule my time, I feel like it has shaped uh, how I work and how I understand that people have different schedules, but it doesn't mean we can't work together. So that's something that I applied right away that didn't require me to change the context or try to adapt it. Uh, it was a continuation of how I worked on that project. Great. And how how are you using that project now in your work in Siri Forest or some of your key learnings from that project? Um, so when I was working on the project, we had to set rules. We had to set what will be our measure of success and now that I'm working uh, in Syria Forest, so it's a startup, but then we have to set goals. We have to know what will be our measure of success. And it's easy for me to know uh, how I'm going to measure our success. Uh, we're starting up, we want to, we want to, we're tackling the QA uh, word, uh, quality assurance, where we learn about uh, manual testing. And, uh, we had to go through eight weeks of apprenticeship, and each week had um, each uh, each week had its own goal. 
So as we went through each week, we would have this uh, this measure of success. We, we had uh, things to actually measure ourselves to, and not only about the project, but also how in that project uh, back when I was working on my degree, we had a rubric that would help us to assess if we met the requirements to work on uh, in that project. So all those details have uh, helped me to shape how I understand work and how I work to actually measure the work on the rubric and come up with something that I feel like it's meeting the requirement and I can just tick off uh, what is on the rubric. Great, thanks Maria. Um, we had another question from one of the listeners and I love this question because it starts with, if we were to have unlimited funding, which would be the dream. So um, the question is for both of us um, and maybe we can just both share a few ideas. Um, what would we want to do or, or what could we see happen in the GEM program if there was unlimited funding? Do you want to start? Yeah. Go, go for it. Um, so I feel like it will be amazing. GEM will be able to support uh, more students in different countries. And the fact that SNHU GEM has brought the degree in places where it would not be accessible otherwise is something that would be done in different places so i feel like that it, that would be a great experience and we would have students who would be able to support students who are coming in so for example i will be able to share my experience with more students i will be able to support uh, more students not only me but also other students who have graduated so we will be giving more students uh, access to higher education, but we would also bringing, we would also be creating more jobs, and that would be amazing, actually. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more that just serving more students, of course, would be something we would love to do. Um, it, while Noria is here on the on the presentation with me, um, you know, Burundi is one of many countries where we have a partner that's up and ready to go and provide this opportunity. Um, and it's just funding that's kind of getting in the way of us trying to really bump forward on this 3% having access to higher education compared to 34% of the general population. So we'd love to really get in there and close that gap. Um, other things I think we'd love to do is provide more support to women. Um, so there is a gender gap in women's achievement. Um, it starts usually around primary school. It gets exacerbated once um, girls start their periods and miss time at school. And by the time you look at getting access to higher education, um, there's already a pretty big gap. So we're really proud that it's 50-50 uh, across all of our sites, men and women, um, but we certainly would like to provide more supports to our women students. I think we'd also love to, the way that we provide um, academic support, we'd love to provide um, employment support to students during their first year of employment and continue to push on really important initiatives like Noria's um, in her work now with digital employment. And then of course, um, Students are really coming to us with a myriad of challenges around um, health, so malaria challenges, um, family planning challenges, cholera outbreaks, um, just a lot of, of, of health issues that um, not all students have to deal with. And we would love to be able to better support students um, through these, these um, challenges to help them find um, even more success. Um, so with that, we have just one minute left and I've been told it cuts off right at time.